Hello, hello, hello. This is Scrapping Like a Lady. How you guys doing? I am up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I have not been on for a minute. And I will tell you guys why. Because we friends. We friends. I got into a quarrel with Mr. C on... What day was it? Uh, well, it was Wednesday morning, really. Because it was like 1 in the morning. And it just came out of nowhere. He was like, rah, 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 rah. I won't tell you guys what we were talking about because it's irrelevant. If you're fussing, it's irrelevant why you guys are having an argument, really. You know how I know? Because... It won't be important a year from now, normally. So, yeah. Um, he was just in a bad mood, and he took it out on me. Poor little me. So, when I am verbally attacked, it takes me a while to get over it. Like, I remember what you said, or even if I don't remember what you said, I remember how you said, or your tone was inappropriate. And so this was like 1.30 in the morning. And of course it's hard for you to go to sleep and he doesn't have any problem. He just, you know, regurgitates on you and then he's like, good night. I'm like, okay, I can't even do you right now. So when I'm not in a great mood, I don't I don't want to talk. And so since I haven't been in a great mood, I spared you guys my bad attitude. <laughs> Why? Because I believe in transferring of spirits, like you get energy from other people. And I didn't want to give you my bad spirit, my bad vibes, you know? What is that one doing over there? That must have came loose from somewhere. Anyways, so let me tilt you guys up for you to see what I'm working on. All right. I realize that I'm gonna go back to that subject, but let me just move on right quick. I realize that my diamond art is like my personality, very sporadic and inconsistent and squirrely. Cause I've got this area almost done. I've got some little ones that I have to do, but like I've got all of this to do over here. Uh, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, I'm working on this color. Oh, I see more of it. And I'm just like all over the place. But you know what? It's mine. So I can do my thing how I want to do it. As long as it gets done. That's what I say to my friends and my kids. Do it whichever way you want to do it as long as it gets done, honey. So back to what I was talking about. So yeah. He and then he just goes right to sleep while I am just up. I cannot believe this sucker. Can you believe this? So, yeah, I'm. It's today is. Well, it's two a.m. on Sunday morning, and this happened on Wednesday morning. So was I some kind of mad girl? I'm gonna work on this right here. Girl, I was some kind of mad. Mm. I was like, if I was violent, I would just cut you. Now I see why people snap. I, I get it. You made me so angry and come outside of myself. So now I'm gonna have to snap on you. 
I mean, he's literally like in the morning. Can I get you a cup of coffee? I'm like, you better get your face away from me while it's still intact. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's marriage. You know, you're gonna get sore at the other person. They're just misunderstandings, you know? And mentally, I can compartmentalize it and put it in its proper place, but it still doesn't take away the sting of the ugliness, you know? Come on, y'all, let's just be real. Let's just be real, real. So, I'll get over it, but it'll just take me a minute. And I know where I get it from. I come by it honestly, because I was talking to my mom years ago, and she's like, ooh. And Kenny makes me mad. It takes me a long time. I give him the cold shoulder, and I'm short with him. He know I'm mad. I was like, oh, Lord. Mom, really? Really? So... And my sister, Sean, she has that, um, she can be nice, nasty, you know, when she's mad. She has that passive aggressiveness going on for her. But, um, yeah, he's, he's lucky I'm nice. Because, uh, well, I think I'm nice. I was nice to him. I could have, uh, whew, I could have let him have it, because there was a lot of not nice words in my head, and I hate going there. You know, it's like, why are we doing this? But I have some people working in the on my back patio. The back patio ground cracked. And the joker that came out and did it once uh, was supposed to come back out because the product he put on it made it crack. Um, and I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I didn't pay for a crackle finish. <laughs> and he was like, I come and redo it, oh, no problem. And then, yeah, it's been two and a half months now and now it's about to get to be uh, springtime and it's going to be go out on the patio time let's go let's do this but no he's a no show and I text him and he doesn't text me back and then days later he's like okay I'll come on this day and he never shows up. Can you imagine? I'm like, what's up with these contractors nowadays? I want their jobs. But he's already been paid, so hey. I guess he's like, what can you do about it? I guess there is things we can do, but you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm keeping my money. Go on, keep it. I will get more of it and just move on with my little life. I know that's not everybody's attitude, but that's mine because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna chase you down to do right. You know, that just, that's just not me. I'm not gonna do it. So, oh Lord Jesus. So my mother will be here on Monday and my sister, Kelly, my dad, and um, my sister's husband and my sister's three kids. Girl. So my schedule was, um, I'm off on Mondays. You know, I work on um, every other Saturday and I'm off on Mondays. Well, I told Pam to take me off the schedule too late for Tuesday, but she was able to reschedule the patients for Wednesday. So off on Monday, off on Wednesday. 
and that would be fine. I mean, they're grown. They'll find something to do. And they're staying at my sister's this time. So, yeah. And they're staying, my daughter's coming as well with my grandbabies. And they are staying at Jacqueline's my niece's house, my sister's daughter. And so I don't have anybody staying in my house, but I don't mind when people stay at my house, but girl, I don't have a guest bedroom and I feel bad. I mean, yeah, you can blow up some big, nice plush mattresses and stuff like that, you know, but um, yeah, Sean has a guest room and everybody has, you know, accommodations for the people. So, girl, girl, that's all right. And I will, you know, like I'll make dinners and stuff like that and take people out to dinner and, you know, I, I am not opposed to that and doing the entertainment part of their stay, you know, take them wherever, buy them whatever. I've got a trunk full of stuff. I went to Ikea and they had all this stuff for kids there. And, um, I was watching Beth Adili. If you guys don't know who she is, she's a YouTuber. Her name is Beth Adili. Or maybe it's Adeli. I don't know. But um, Sabrina and I both watch her. And um, she does a lot of cricket stuff and, you know, things like that and the joy. And so she made a mat, um, a craft mat. And she got the stuff from Ikea. So I went over to Ikea to get those mats with Bree Bree when she was here on Tuesday. And, um, OMG, I was passing through the kids section. You know, you got to go through the whole dang on store. I'm like, ah, get me out. So... Yeah, needless to say, I'm like going there for these cheap four dollar, five dollar mats, and come out a hundred and what did I spend like one sixty or something like that? I was like, Jesus, what did I buy? But there's three of them, so whatever you get, you have to get three of them. So I did. Mr. C is probably going to get up when he realizes I'm not in the bed with him. Mm -mm. I don't want to go to bed with him right now. Yeah. I hear somebody up upstairs that's probably camera up plants and games or something. These kids nowadays. Mm. And you know I call them kids. He's 24, but... He he goes to school full time. He don't pay no bills. If you don't pay a bill, you're not a kid. <laughs> you're still a dependent. Oh, Jesus. I think I forgot to give that boy his allowance. <laughs> Speaking of being a kid. Yeah. I told him, you might as well become, he's thinking about becoming a nurse anesthetist. So I was like, um, well, he's not thinking about it. He's, well, I guess he is thinking about it because he's not in the, program so but he was um I said you might as well become an anesthesiologist and go all the way just do it boy you let someone say I'll pay all your bills and even when you want unnecessary stuff I'll buy it for you just stay in school well actually I did have that option with Willie but mm -mm. I wanted to get my wings wet. And you know, once you get your wings wet, you don't wanna, you don't wanna stop. 
it wasn't for the money. I just enjoyed what I was doing. So, Sean's like, you are crazy. I have been working since I was 16 years old, she said, something like that. She's like, I wish I could just stop working. I want to retire and be a, a housewife. I said, Bleh. I don't want to do that. I did that. Been there, done that. Loved it. You know, some people say, hated it. No, I wouldn't have did it if I hated it. But, mm -mm, been there, done that. Over it? Can you say that? Can you guys hear Mr. C in there snoring? That brother, no, he likes to snore. Mm, oh, look at this one's popped off in there. Come here. Come over here. Mm. Get your butt in there. You know, these, these three tens, I swear, they have been the worst. Oh, Jesus. Come along. They have been the worst. I am so serious. There's been all types of junk all over these ones. And they just aren't fitting good. Mm, look at me. I'm forcing that in there, guys. Do y'all see this? Okay, I hope you in there. I didn't hear my famous click, click, click. Mm, and then these ones there. Okay, now fix that line. Fix ya. Okay. Stay with me. Alrighty. So, I'm looking forward to my fan fam being out. Haven't seen my mom in, jeez, I want to say it's been... three years and mind you she is literally like four hours down the road mm -hmm. I'm in North Dallas and she's in Houston so I like it when they come up I don't have an excuse for not going down well this last year I do but when we went down there, she had just, they had just bought a new house and she was like, I need you to come help me decorate. And, and some of our decorating styles are the same, but some of them are not. So I had to be like, it's your house. Just tell me what you want. Let me get out your way. And my dad, he put in his own floor. I was like, you go, old man. So, you guys know I call my stepfather, and he's my dad. And he's so cool, like, so cool. Like his ears pierce and he laughs real easy and um, and about everything. He's always reminded me when I was a kid how I act like a brat. I was, I was kind of bratty. I guess I'm still kind of bratty when I think about it. A little bit, but hell, so what? Don't like it? Don't care. But, um, yeah. They'll all be here. And my mother, she's so she's so sweet. She is a very sweet person. Um, 
and she literally has been wearing the same hairstyle since I was a kid. I'm like, mom, I mean, if she's going out somewhere fancy, she'll like curl her hair up, as she says. She has that real, real soft, like mixed people hair, you know? And her hair doesn't hold a curl, so she curls it and it's just gone like in a matter of minutes, which I guess would be very frustrating. So she, she just pulls it back in a ponytail. All right, mother. And Kimberly, she has very soft hair too. You might put some starch on that sucker. It's gotta be a way to hold the curls. There's products out there, but today, I literally went out of the house with my hair braided. I did. I was like, I was like seven again. <laughs> you know, so many times in life we're so ready to give up ourselves to be with you know, other people want us to be societal norms. I don't think that's a sign of maturity. A lot of people would say, oh, let me move y'all over here so you can see what I'm doing. That, oh, you're mature, you know, she's maturing, you know, into what, into what other people want. I am never going to mature then. I'm gonna stay the young childish me then. Mm -mm. Cause what we think is normal or healthy or mature to me, seems like a bunch of miserable people just on some type of uh, power trip to make me conform. And I it. No, sir. And that's why when I don't want to go to work, if I'm not in the best of moods and I don't want to be there, I call Pam and tell her, reschedule my clients. Why? Because I'm not going to transfer any negative energy to them. Now, do I do it Every single time, no. I'll just kind of like pray like, Lord, you know, help me get through this day and help me not to be, you know, a negative influence on anyone. But yeah, that's how I pray. And you guys should too. Because uh, you know how they say, don't take your work home with you, you know. I don't think you should take your home life with you or, you know, whatever you're going through. You shouldn't take that with you to the workplace. But my clients, they're, I'm an open book. So on the days that I do, I'm just like, girl, guess what Willie said? And they're like, ah, uh -uh, no, he didn't. Girl, did you cut him? No, I didn't cut him. He's still alive. <laughs> Some of my clients are real good. And my accountant and her husband, you know. I say they're my spiritual advisor. I'm like, Emmett, you better get your boy. What'd he do? Like, you need to call him and tell him something. So they were there this week. Yeah, that we have a massage therapist that comes in and she is amazing. She is she has a beautiful spirit and she's like, Lisa, last time I got all the money because she's just starting and you didn't get any. 
And I says, baby, I told you I don't want your money. When you come here and you take care of my patients, let me put this one over here. This one looks Willy Wonka. Let me move these guys down a little bit. I said, you, that's your money, honey. You working for that. You bending over backwards, literally, for your money. I'm not going to take your money, baby. No. No. She's like, no, 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 please, please, I cannot. I said, well, then I guess you better stop working here because... I'm not taking your money, honey. What you do is very hard work. You deserve every cent of it. Hell, I should be come, paying you for coming in here, taking care of my people. And she's just sitting there holding her face, looking at me like, what kind of human being are you? What's your angle? It's like, I don't have one. Not a selfish motive anyways. No. Mm -mm. So she... Uh, the people that got massages last time came back this week, uh, a couple, and they got their massages, Karen and Emmett did, and um, she bought us um, dumplings and all of this stuff, in. and uh, I appreciate that. And then Karen and them, they don't eat pork. And neither does Pam. And so one of the things she was, uh, she only bought one thing that was chicken and everything was pork. And so I got all of the food. I was like, too bad for y'all. I was a pork eater. Y'all know I like my bacon. I told you. Bacon for breakfast, bacon for lunch, dinner. I eat it all. Uh -uh. I do not have any qualms. You know, people are like, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Well, then you best not do it if you feel that way. Because <laughs> this girl over here, she's doing it. I got no time to be listening to none of you earthlings. Yeah, I ain't been here before. Yeah, I don't really know how this thing goes. Don't try to tell me anything. Because I ain't listening. So, I bought a book uh, when Sabrina was here. And it was, well, she bought one. I guess, I, I, did she buy it? It was Praying for Your Future Husband. I handed it to her. I don't know if she bought it or not. I think she did. And then I bought one for praying for your husband. Like I have stormy books, pray for your, you know, how to pray for your husband and all this kind of stuff like that, you know. It's sitting right upstairs. Did I read that thing? Mm -hmm. I glanced through it, but I didn't read it. Um, But Sean picked it up the other day because it was on my lady table and she picked it up. She was like, you need to read this. Because I was sore with Willie. And, he, and I told him right in front of Sean, this is why I'm sore. You need to get over it. Mmm. Mmm. It has to fade away. It has to fade away. What do you guys do when you get mad at your spouse? I know what the word of God says, people. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Basically, don't go to bed angry, right? I know that. But I look up to the heavens and I repent and I apologize and say, Lord, you have to forgive me for this one because this brother right here... <laughs> No. I'm still angry. And I told him, Lord, don't come yet. I, I'm still angry. <laughs> and I'm not really angry. I guess the word is hurt. Because I'm not really offended. Because... There wasn't anything for me to be offended about. What was said was just foolishness. 
so I have one lady, she's a psychiatrist, and so she was here um, yesterday, Saturday, and uh, I feel like I get free counseling service from her. And she feels the same way about me because I guess she can be very blunt and open, you know, with me. And she's like, I think you're very healthy, Lisa. And I was like, really? She goes, yeah, I think you're very healthy mentally. It's like, hmm. And she's like, and I don't get to say that to many people. Made me feel some kind of way. Because my sister's always like, you're crazy. I'm like... <laughs> She's told me that so many times throughout my life, I actually feel like she might be right sometimes. But if I'm crazy, then honey, let me be crazy. Now, I'm going to turn this thing in a Willy Wonka way. Y'all see how much I've gotten done? Let me slide it up. Look at this, though. Look how much I've gotten done. Look, I only have oh, this much more to do. Can't, oh, y'all can't see your little feet. That's it. Yeah, I've been working on it without you guys. Soaking and working. That's what I was doing. turning this. Let me finish turning. Well, let me turn it this way. Mm, this ain't gonna work too well. I'm gonna have to bend it. There we go. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? Let's go up under there. How about some of that? All right, there. Mm-hmm. So I'm working right down here. So tomorrow I've got a lot of cleaning to do. I've got a lot of laundry to do. And I got a lot of cooking to do. And I need to give my sister some money because she she's going to be taking care of mom and all of them at her house. And um, our pocketbooks look different. So I need to I need to help a sister out over there. Yes, madam. I need to do that. My niece is okay. She can take care of my daughter and my grandkids. She don't need my help. So, I'm going to turn myself this way and do it this way. But, uh... Yeah, I better... I better at least offer to help my sister. Because she's going to have what? Five people, six people. My sister's husband is only going to stay till just, you know, two days. But my sister and her three kids are going to stay till Friday. And Willie was worried about everybody coming up. You know, because he was like thinking, oh, they could get us sick or whatever. And I was like, but you have your immunization. You have your vaccine. What's, what are you talking about? What's the point of getting it if you're going to be afraid to go back out and live life? You know, yeah, be cautious, honey, be cautious. But you don't have to be all cray cray. That's just my thinking. 
Oh, and Sabrina, remember, she was going out on an assignment. Ooh, my voice. See that, y'all? My man voice coming in. Ooh. Yes. Um, Sabrina was going out on an assignment, and it got canceled. She was a little bummed about that. Oh, Sabrina? Sabrina? We didn't cancel that reservation. I got to make sure we do that. But, um, yeah, but she, um, so she's not leaving for Maryland just yet. So, oh, gee, um, so I will probably go down to her house next weekend. I'll take you guys along with, you know what I like to do when I'm on long drives? I like to listen to the books on tape and just roll. Now, mind y'all, I have that uh, sleep disorder and I fall asleep real easy. So, I've I've learned how to travel if I'm driving to leave early in the morning when I first wake up and I've got like great energy, yeah. Oh, Jesus, drop that. Um, but still, when you feel tired, just pull on over and sleep or get out, walk around, do whatever you have to do. Don't put other people's lives at danger because you're trying to push yourself to do something that your body is clearly telling you it don't wants to do. And, um, yeah. So, I'll have to leave early in the morning, you know, and drive there. One time, uh, her ex-husband was being a butt and so I was like, I'm out of here. And I left. And it was like midnight or something like that. Oh my gosh. I had to call Willie for he could talk me home, you know, for most of the trip. Because I was so tired. And it's not like it comes on. It just is like, boom. It's like there. Like you're swerving on the road and everything like that. Y'all gonna see newsflash, scrapping like a lady, dead on the highway, trying to drive three hours straight. Girl, bye. I ain't trying to do all that. No, so go early in the morning, throw on your books and tape, play some music, or turn the windows, you know, roll the windows down, or whatever you gotta do. But, and I don't know why I'm that way, you know, but I am. Like, and not, it depends on what time of day it is. This girl just is out. The car just rocks me to sleep. Super scary, too. Other people are looking at me like, what? What do you mean you couldn't drive to Dallas because you fell asleep? Mm -hmm. I will fall asleep. So, yeah, I guess every time I cry, my parents must have gotten a car and was driving around before I could hudge, because uh, my body is strained. You're rolling in the car, go to sleep. That's why going on cruises are really nice. I'm just like, just let me lie on the deck and rest. Just get out of my face. Just let me rest. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. But I am fun to go on vacation with when I'm awake. <laughs> yes, I'm great, great. Veronica wants me to go on this little spiritual retreat with her and her husband. And I was talking to um, Emma and Karen and they were like, Ooh, no, Lisa. You shouldn't go do that. And I was like, what? Wow. 
doing them. It's about um, cleansing things off of you and all of this kind of stuff. And I hadn't checked completely into it. It just sounds very interesting. And um, yeah. When I said it to Willie, he kind of looked at me sideways. We went to this one um, thing. It was called The Roads. And you had to be sponsored. And so one of my friends sponsored us. They had gone through the program as a, as a couple. And it's, it's the same thing. It's for spiritual cleansing. And just to get things basically off of your chest that have been there for decades. And um, it was done in a church. And um, it was the most memorable spiritual experience I ever had. Um, yeah, there wasn't, and it went on for four days. Four days, people. And they said that some people, you know, they give you a buddy, a person to, you know, link up with. Because it's been said that some people have committed suicide after going through this four-day program. You know, it's like a detox. And they, they have these counselors that bring up things that all the way from your childhood, you know? And I was like, this one lady said to me, because one of the games is in a group, and there were like, I want to say like 180 of us, or I don't even know how many, was in this big auditorium. So we got into this big circle, and they gave us a Smarties, a pack of Smarties. And 90 people were in the inner circle, and like 90 people were in the outer circle. And so each person would come by and say to you that the... the um, I'll give you this scenario, was like, there has been a disease that has been, it was like the coronavirus, let's say it that way for you to get a full understanding, of uh, the coronavirus and only you have the antidote. And so each person came by and the Smarties were supposed to be the pills. And each person would say, do you have medicine for me? And if you gave that person one of your Smarties, then uh, they could live through the virus. But you only had like six, seven Smarties. So you only have seven people that you can save. And so they would come by and say, do you have medicine for me? And I'd have to say, no, I do not have medicine for you. And you're staring these people in their eyes, basically telling them, no, you're gonna die. It what and it sounds so silly, you know, but if you're in a darkened room with the ambiance of candle lights and all this stuff, um, and they and they tell you the story and what's happening, and I forget the way it all went down. I don't know if they showed us a video, and it was very heart wrenching, and then all of a sudden you're put into this movie or this real life experience of choosing who to save and who not to save. Oh my goodness, my lip was quivering. And when at the beginning of it, the first day, this happened on the third day. On the first day, they said, um, stand up and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here and this, that, and the other. And that took the entire day. But for some reason, some of the people, their stories were so gut-wrenching, difficult, their lives rather, that I could remember it. So when they came by on the third day and they were like, do you have medicine for me? You want to save everybody, you know, that you could remember their story. And this one guy, he was a type 1 diabetic and he just had a terrible life 
like abused all his life and just uh, and seeing a grown man tell his life story and crying was just memorable. So when he came by and he's like, do you have medicine for me? How can you say, no, I, I don't have anything for you? You know, he's already had hell in his life. Can't you do something? Aren't you the human being that can make his life better? It's like going to an orphanage. I could never go to an orphanage because I'd probably have to bring like every single child home with me. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so the, that went on for four days. By the end of it, they had so many mental exercises that they did to us that there was a baptism on the fourth day. It was the last ceremony and you could give your life to Christ. And uh, my husband was one of the people that got baptized and I was shocked. And I would see him and because we weren't together throughout the whole, you know, throughout the whole thing. Some of the things we would come together and at lunch, we would come together and stuff like that. And I could see he was visibly shaken and, you know, his little face would be so red and his eyes would be bloodshot. And, and one time he just grabbed me and started hugging me and crying, you know. So I was like, uh, what did you just release off of you, you know. So, um yeah. And then, so our friends, our first set of friends sponsored our next set of friends. And those friends sponsored me and Willie. And Willie and I sponsored the next people. So, um, but that's the only way you could go is if you got sponsored by someone. When I tell you that Willie and I sponsored uh, our son Richard and our friend Sean, he came over after day, I want to say day three, and he was shaken to the core. Like he started crying and I was looking at him and he's a happy person. And I was looking at him. I was like, are you okay? Are you going to be okay? And he was, I mean, this place, if you ever go, it's called The Roads here in Texas. Um, they might have changed the name. It's been like 10 years since I've been. But it, they had been doing it for many, many years. So, um I, I thought I heard that they had changed the name, but it's, oh, what is this doing over there? It is so worth going to. It's better than going to a counselor for years and years. I mean, this four day retreat tears every fiber of your being. We had one couple the husband stood up in front of everyone and said, I've decided to divorce my wife. And his wife was sitting there. I was like, mm, mm, mm. So, yeah, it's life changing. It makes you, um, it causes you, it don't make you, it causes you to, ha to have life changing um, thoughts where you want to, you know, really do some, some major cleanup and change in your life, you know, whether that's getting a divorce, like in the one case or getting married or, um, changing careers. We had several people. They were just like, I'm quitting my job on Monday. I was like, show you right. Do you boo? You got one life. You better live it. So yeah, that was the roads. Um, I gotta put that one there. So I don't know. My thing is this place is in um, the one Veronica wants to go to. It's in San Diego. San Diego. So it's not very expensive. I don't know if it's $1,000 each person or $1,000 a couple. I need to look at the email, but, and then 
uh, Veronica said, oh, I found tickets as cheap as $250. So uh, it was $500 for their round trip tickets. So that's good. Because, you know, sometimes it could be a deterrent if you have to, what is that? Oh, those are the dots. You know, buy the retreat and then buy the tickets and this, that, and the other, you know. But $2,500 ain't bad, you know, if it's going to improve your life. No. No, ma'am. No, at least I don't think so. You might think so. So if, if you do, don't leave it in the comments. <laughs> don't don't leave it. Just just think it. Be nice, people. Be nice. Um or whatever you have on you. You just might have some things, you know, some behaviors that you don't like in yourself that you want to change you know so you can go somewhere and do something that's going to give you a real good cleansing and not going to invite evil spirits to get on you <laughs> then you should do it that's my thinking that's all i'm gonna say on that So I have to do these S's over here. Can y'all see those? Yeah. So that has to be done. Let's do that together. Y'all want to do that? We have nine more minutes left. My sister called me the other day and she was like, Lisa. And I said, yeah. She's like, Ugh, what's wrong with your voice? I was like, uh, this is my man voice in the morning. You already know that. What do you want? And she was like, Ugh, let me let you go back to sleep. <laughs> That's a sleep. I don't do it. it. It happens. It just comes on where my voice gets a little raspier and, and deeper. So it's got to be about three now, you guys. So you're going to get my transvestite voice. Mm-hmm. I hear somebody up there making noise up there. That ain't nothing but Cameron. That's why he doesn't wake up till noontime. He's been up. I tell you what, that boy is going to school and I feel like I'm going to school. He's like, Mom, read this. Boy, bye. I did my time. But I don't say it to him. I'm like, okay. I just read it best I can. Because I'm telling you what, that boy, I said, Cameron, this sounds like a, a thesis for a master's program, boy. He's like, yeah, it's pretty good, right? I'm like, yeah, you're just like hella smart for no reason. Seriously. And he even, he had to write some type of, I don't know what it was. Just looked like a dissertation or something. I was like, hmm. And he put graphics with it and all this stuff. I'm like, my God, is this what they're asking from, for you guys in school? He's like, well, not really. You know, I go up and above. And then he doesn't want to submit his stuff. I'm like, this has got to be the best. And if it's not, if they if that teacher say something about it, tell them I'm gonna come slash their tires. Cause my baby, he he, ooh, that boy is smart. That's all I gotta say. He is a smart cookie. He like his daddy. You know. If you get so mad, I'm going to talk about my husband for a minute. If you get so mad that you're like, that's it. I'm at the end of my rope with this turkey. 
I'm going to go get a divorce or think about getting a divorce or whatever. If you think about a situation like that person's been harmed, you know, um, and how that makes you feel. For me, like if I think about my husband being harmed or getting a car accident or something, oof, makes the, my stomach drop out of my, oof, just really, just makes my stomach fall. I'm like, no, I can't be without them. I want to cut them and hurt them real bad, but I don't want to be without them. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's, for me, that's the, that's my line in the sand. When I want you dead, <laughs> or I don't care about your well-being, then maybe it's better that we're apart. Because I might have to help you <laughs> get to what where I'm envisioning you being. So, yeah. No, I would... I don't want nothing to happen to my baby boo. Little fat cow. Yeah, I said it. All righty, I got those S's in there. Oh, Jesus, just poured them all back out. You know, I ordered extra boats, and I'm so glad I did because I love just being able to have them filled. Like, I've got a lot of them over here that are already filled, and I can just keep going. I did see where you can actually buy it. It's got, like, drawers with all the shelves and I'm like, I keep looking at it. And I'm like, where the hell am I going to put that? But I bought a top to go on top of my rasp cart. Um, so I guess I could actually look at that, y'all. We done talked ourselves through something. If I put that um, shelf on top of the rasp cart, then I could get the little square box that holds my little boats. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. See, it was worth staying up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I just talked myself through something. And yes, I have been shopping. I've been doing some retail therapy. But you know what? I haven't been buying any of my diamond paintings. Uh, I do have some or one or two that are coming from different companies that I wanted to try. Um... But I haven't been buying any of them recently. I would say in the last week and a half, I haven't bought any diamond art. Is that bad? That I even feel like that? Like a week and a half is a long time to not be shopping. Mm-hmm. That's, that's bad, y'all. I'm, I'm going to call. I'm going to call Cray Cray on that one myself. Mm-hmm. But I have been buying... Uh, I spent like 200, I, first of all, I upgraded my Cricut Access membership because I was just doing it monthly and haven't used it in like years. So I was like, let's just do it for the entire year and use it because me and Sabrina are doing it. We're going to do it together and you get 20% off of your um, Cricut.com orders. So, I paid the $119. I shopped on Cricut that night because it was having a major sale on the infusible inks. My bill came to $240 or something like that. And all said and done, once they took the 20% off, the shipping off and everything, it was like $196, $191, something like that, out the door. And I saved $44, that much I remember. And Sabrina was laying down, and I was like, Sabrina, I just saved $44. So if you think about it, I paid $119 for the membership, and already they saved me $44. How much am I going to save this year? That membership's going to be paid for and some. I'm just saying so if you if y'all think about it that way, all uh, y'all cricketeers out there, um, then it, it's worth the money. 
I know a lot of people have been going back and forth on, you know, cricket stuff, you know. Like they feel like they're not being fair sometimes, you know, with the new stuff that they come out with or the new machines and stuff like that. But hell, you're going to have that with every company. There's going to be stuff you don't like about it. You don't like it. Just go on to something else, honey. Just go on to something else. But Sabrina was like, I think I'm going to do all thing cricket. I said, do you, boo. Don't stop it at nothing. If that's what you want, get all cricket. I mean, she got the cricket uh, machine. She got the easy press. She got the mug press. Go for it. Whatever they come out with, get and add to your collection. Just keep going. And there's something to be said about that because then you become very knowledgeable about one thing as opposed to the way I do things, you know? I'm like, I like to have, I don't know. I just like to have, oh, this came out on this company. Let me try it. This came out on this company. Let me try it. Yeah. Like, I have other die-cutting machines. I do. I have two Brothers Scan and Cut. I have a, a Click and Cut machine that people probably don't even know what that is. Um, Sizzix machine, Cricket's machines. Um, yeah. Got something else, but I can't think of it. Oh, what is that machine? Um, I pulled it out the other day, and I've got a lot of cartridges to it. It'll come to me in a minute. And I was like, slice. The little slice machine with the glass mat. Uh, that's what it is. It's called the slice. But I really don't use that machine. So I need to bless somebody with it. And it's not going to be my raggedy daughter either because I gave her one of my crickets and she's yet to use it. So, mm -mm, Kim, you not getting it. I think I need to give it to... Sabrina's daughter because she was saying that uh, Sabrina said tonight that she was thinking about starting to do you know cricket stuff so maybe she could use that and get her get her fingers uh, a little wet to see if she even want to get into that but honey Sabrina has been doing the most she's been doing t-shirts mugs coasters I told her today, I do hate you. She said, why? Laughing while she's saying it. And I'm like, you know good and well why. Here I am at work and you out there cricketing. How fair is that? She said, well. But I could have came home and got with my cricket. But you know what I did? My um, son's baby mama was like, your grandkids want pizza and ice cream. So I cash apped her $30 and I said, well, if grandma can do it, let her do it. So I didn't know where she got her pizza from. I was like, is that even enough? And so she was like, hmm, that's more than enough. Laugh out loud. And I go, okay. Those are my babies. I said, three weeks. I'm going to get to see them in three weeks. Ooh, I'm going to kiss on those cheeks. You should see my grandbaby. Her daughter, my granddaughter, her cheeks are so freaking fat. Mm. And she's, I said, what flavor ice cream do they like? Because I don't even know. And she was like, they like the rainbow sherbet from Baskin and Robbins. And as soon as she said that, I was like... 
Oh yeah, they, they're mine. No DNA tests needed, honey, because that's my jam. When I was a young woman, I loved Baskin Robbins uh, Rainbow Sherbert. So I went and took my, I got off the couch because I was just laying across the couch. I got off the couch and I said, mm -hmm, that sounds good. I said, Willie, you want some? He likes the uh, very berry and he likes the strawberry topping put on top of it. I said, do you want some 31 flavors, your, your, your um, strawberry? He said, mm-hmm. And he was like, you want me to go with? And I said, no, because I'm still sore with him. So I said, no, I get it for you. <laughs> Ain't I tacky, y'all? Girl, tacky as hell. I'm not going to be too mad with him anymore. But I'm, you know what? I'm going to go in there and wake him up because he slept enough and tell him, let's not fuss and fight. Then he'd give me sweet kisses. And he's like, I don't want to fight with you. Mm-hmm. Girl, you got to be good to your man. So, if you ain't going to get rid of him, you might as well be good to him. Even when they don't deserve it. Just be good. So, I've got these ones to do over here. So, I'm going to do those. And then I'm going to bid y'all some good night. All right. Let's see where they're at. You see which one I'm using, y'all? These ones are over there in the boats. These empty ones right there. They're in the boat over there. Because I'm going to have some of that to do down there. But where's this zero at? What? Where's a little ledger at? I'm so glad they put a ledger on the top and on the bottom, honey. Six. This one right here. Um, make my life easier. Now, I needed to get, I called my beautician last week, and I was like, I need to get in for an appointment. And she's like, Lisa, I call you back. Honey, I ain't heard higher hair of her. She another person I need to cut. Nope, I have not heard anything from her. And she don't know me, honey. I will show up at your house. Because I told her, I was like, I'll just come to your house. She's like, Lisa, no. It's my off day. Don't you think I need an off day? I said, if you ask me if I think you do and my hair look like who shot the sheriff, I'm going to tell you no. And I was like, don't worry. I'll bring you some breakfast. So I'm going to have to call her in the morning and tell her, um, I hope you rested. Because I'm at your front door. We're friends, too, so we can put each other out. You can put somebody out if they're your friend. You can inconvenience them. I'll go jump right in her bed. Wake up! Lisa, you're crazy. Mm -mm, come on, do my hair. Come on. Get your butt out the bed. So, yes. Can y'all see what I'm doing down here? Do y'all even care? Mm-mm. Oh, let me tell you guys this. So, um, this one client of mine, she's trying to get me to go to these uh, improvisation classes. Ooh, say that three times. Um, so, she's trying to get me to go there. And they teach you, like, when you tell a joke, like, timing before you tell the next joke and all of this kind of stuff, right? And she's like, oh, my God, you are so funny. You're a funny person. I think you would like it and da-da-da-da-da. So she went, she asked me to go to a one um, last Saturday. But it was kind of, I was already on my way to take Logan somewhere. Well, I told her yes. And then she said, oh, sorry, there's only one um, seat available and I was like, all right. And then she texted me back and she said she had called them and they said, sure, you can bring her. But I had already um, started on my way to take Logan somewhere and I didn't see that. Um, we went, Logan and I went to the um, flea market 
and we had corny dogs, those long ones, the one foot long ones. And then we had, it was so good, Jesus. It was so good with some mustard. Get yourself away from me. And then we had um, smoked turkey legs. We had um, lemonade and oh, we just had a time. It was, that food is expensive at the fair. I guess they have you out there. They're like, y'all going to pay us to feed your belly. But it's it's just all part of fun in life, you know? So the guy was like, $30? I was like, for two corn dogs and two drinks? <laughs> Woo! I was like, be blessed, honey. But it was good. Um, and it wasn't quite $30, y'all. It was $15 for the corn dogs and, or well, $14, something like that. And then it was $6 each drink or something like that. It was $12. So, yeah, anyways, it was like 28 bucks. But close enough, y'all know what I'm talking about. That stuff is expensive. Now, I have a professional cotton candy machine and I used to be one of the vendors that did the cotton candy um, at our like uh, fairs and stuff like that that we have here in Little Elm and everything and you can make some really good money but I'm not gonna charge no five dollars seven dollars for cotton candy no I'm going to do this for the babies. I'm going I'm to give the parents a good price, you know. So I think I made them like $3, $4, something like that. So, and sometimes if the mama came up and they had multiple children, I'm like, okay, you pay for three and get two of these babies free. You know, you got to, you know what I say, you got to love on the people, honey. You can make their life hard, too. Add some goodness to it. But yes, I I actually love cotton candy so much. I told my husband I want one of those machines. And we were buying the um, stainless steel countertop from our friend. And um, he owns a, a, a store that sells to... Um, restaurants and stuff like that and so um, he had the cotton candy machines and I think I paid like I think I paid less than a thousand dollars for it well honey it is made it's <laughs> it is made more than that by far just doing the just doing a few hours, you get like seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We did like four hours, and I got seven hundred dollars one time. I told Kim here because they Kim came down and uh, they went to see the fireworks, and so she was helping me in the booth. Um, and so I was like, "Baby, here, you take some of this money, you know." She's like, "No, mom, it's yours." I was like, "I don't need it all. You take some of it." So yeah, it's it's a easy way to make money in the summer times and stuff like that if you want to do that. But if you want to do it just because you want to be good to your community, you know, and our church borrowed my machine um, one year for the um, trunk or treat that they do, um, or my old church. I don't go to that one anymore. Are you guys gone? Have you gone back to church yet since the whole pandemic started? I haven't gone back. But I need to. In fact, I need to go this morning. All right. I'm putting these in here. I got that one dot, dot, dot to do, and then this whole top section literally will be done, and I can continue to move on and not feel guilty about my my mind, y'all. My mind is so sporadic, but that's what makes me spontaneous, don't it, Jesus? Mm-hmm. Don't hate. 
Like if my sister come over and she's helping me clean. She's like, Lisa, stay focused. What are you doing in this room? She's like, what are you doing in this room? We're supposed to be um, doing a deep clean on your kitchen. I was like, but I came in here. She's like, get out, out, go back to the kitchen. What's wrong with you? She'll push me too. <laughs> Girl, that's the way my mind is. Can't do nothing about it. Now I need a little bitty equal sign right there. Mm, mm, mm. Now I know some of y'all, y'all probably like, oh, this girl would drive me absolutely bonkers the way she do her diamond art just all over the place like that. Well, maybe you need to be drove a little crazy with your anal self. A little crazy, put a little spice in your life. Mm -hmm. My husband, he always give me that side word glance. He's like, you're so crazy. I'm like, mm-hmm, that's why you love me. Where's that T at? Number eight. Mm -hmm. I told you guys I had this. Oh, Jesus. I had this one client come and... Um, she was a librarian, just a holy looking little thing. And I was like, she came back in for her follow-up and I just looked at her, I was thinking to myself, girl, are you gonna ever find a man? I don't even know. Now what was, oh, it was the, these little teas. You gonna have to, you gonna have to have me talk to you for a while cause you just so homely looking. What was that one girl on Charlie Brown and her hair was just, was it, it wasn't Sally. Sally was a cute one. He was in love with Sally. What was her name? Just plain Jane looking and no sex appeal at all. But if we didn't have plain Janes, we wouldn't know what sexy was, right? So that's what makes this world balance. Some people have all that sex appeal and some people have got no appeal at all. This one little girl, well, she's been seeing me for about, mm, about 15 years or so. I've known her when she was uh, a senior in, in high school and now she's got her little, I think she has a master's degree. I don't know. She's highly educated, that baby is. And so when she came in the other day, her spirit was just kind of, um, I've gone 17 minutes over running my mouth. All right, listen, y'all, yeah, I'm about to go. Let me finish telling y'all this story. Um, so she's, her spirit was just kind of like um, a little quieter than she normally is. She has a quiet spirit, but it was quieter. And I said, baby girl, what's going on with you? And she rolled her eyes backwards trying to see me. And I said, mm -mm, what is going on with you? Why are you, why are you f making me feel some kind of way? And she smiled and I was like, do you have a boyfriend? And she said, I had a boyfriend, he broke up with me. And I said, oh, okay. Why he break up with you? I don't know. I said, come on, what's wrong with you? Tell me why he break up with you. And she was like, I don't know. He just, just broke up with me, you know? He wanted to see other people or whatever, whatever. Let me see, what is this little mark right here? Why am I doing this the hard way? Um, so we started talking. She knows the guy for 30 days and she's like, can I move in with you? That baby probably was like, ooh, oh Lord, bugaboo. Let me get up out of here. And he's like, uh, we're gonna have to break up. I said, um, baby, why would you wanna move in with him? Because I know she's, she's staying back home with her mom and dad when the pandemic happened. Um, she went home to her mom and dad's house. They live actually down the street from me. And um, 
she said, I'm tired of living with my parents, you know, does that mean other? I said, Boy, girl, bye. You scared that baby. That's what you did. I told her, you got to play hard to get, not nice and easy. They they like the chase. They like little dogs. They like to chase. When you throw your dog a toy, he go and chase after it and bring it back to you, wagging his tail and happy and this, that, and the other. I said, girl, you gave no chase whatsoever. That, that that don't turn a man on. He don't want none of that. Oh, I want to stay home and have kids, she said. I said, oh, let me slap your cheek. And that's noble. You know, if you if that's what you want, that's what you want. And you're going about it all wrong. Because two men had broken up with this baby in uh, six months. She was so sad, and I could tell her little eyes was like welling up a little bit. And uh, I told her, no, this is what you got to do. You got to shock the kind of man. You can't just go throwing yourself out there. When he call, you say, let me call you back. If you say, let's go eat Taco Bell, say, I don't like Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. You got to be uh, interesting to them, too. Even if you like Taco Bell. I don't, but that's what Willie was like. Uh, would you like to grab some Taco Bell and go to the park? No, I don't like Taco Bell. He was like, oh, really? He was like, nope. Okay, where do you want? That's right. It's got to, you got to put it on that. Put it where they know. It, oh, it's it's going to be about her. Yes, it's all about me. Now, you got to give a little bit. Don't let me make you think that I was a total jerk. But you got to make it so that they want to get to know you. Women, we spend all our good energy trying to get to know them. And being pretentious, fixing ourselves up, this, that, and the other all the time. And, uh, and then he marry you and you wake up looking like somebody beat you with the ugly stick. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. That's just not the way I thought about rolling. Can I come and see you? No, not tonight. Oh, why are you doing something? Yes. And apparently so. Because I know, like, with Mr. C, I could see when he was, like, not, not chasing as hard as he did. Then I just pulled back a little bit. Mm -mm. You're going to continue this chase. For 28 years, you're going to continue this chase. And it's not like you're making it as if you can't do with like you can do without them or you can't do without them because you can so they might as well know it up front i can do without you i will have breath whether you're in my life or not in my life it's not love to make somebody think oh i can't do without you that's not love that's trickery Now, whether I want to do without you or don't want to do without you, that's up to me. But you need to know I will survive with or without your raggedy tail in my life. Yes, sir, I will. And with that being said, I'm going to go wake up Mr. C for he can uh, apologize to me. <laughs> this is Scrapping Like a Lady. Deuces.